Welcome back to How to Be a Better DM, the official podcast of Monsters.Rent. I'm Justin Lewis. And I'm Tanner Wayland. And we are here to help you tell better stories for yourself and your players as you dungeon master sessions of D&D, Dungeons and Dragons. We'd like to give you some quick announcements. We actually have one before the show. And then after the show, if you want to stick around, we have some more announcements then as well. Uh, but first, let's talk about this. Tired of being alone? Are you tired of not having any of your players understand you? Are you tired of never truly belonging? Well, you're in luck. All you need to do is join the Guild. The Guild is a unique and exclusive experience that is only open to Dungeon Masters. It is a full community focused on helping ease your DMing burdens. Want to meet other DMs? Join the Guild. Want to discuss your homebrew ideas with people who would appreciate it instead of just telling your cat? Join the guild! Want to find a place where all your wildest dreams will come true? Join the guild! Go to monsters.rent slash guild and sign up today for free. Wait, that can't be right. Chuck, Chuck, can you check this again? Is this supposed to be... What? Oh, it's... They're serious? It's free? Oh. Okay, all right. Yes, go to monsters.rent slash guild and sign up today for free, even though they are crazy for giving this away for free. Common side effects may include burping, sneezing, laughing, breathing, hearing, listening, tasting, farting, critting, sarcasm, and in extreme cases, explosive diarrhea. Awesome. With that out of the way, we can get into today's show. Welcome back to How to Be a Better DM, the official podcast of Monsters.Rent. Thank you for joining me. I'm Justin Lewis, and today I'm going to be your guide through the Shadowfell. We have a lot to cover, including me talking with a very special guest later in today's tour. So please keep up with me, and uh, let's just start the tour in the Shadowfell. Uh, real quick, though, I also want to thank you to all of you who have joined the guild, it's been amazing to see this collaboration between everyone. Uh, and the guild is one of today's sponsors in the show. Uh, but it's awesome to see the collaboration between everyone in the Discord server and getting to know people from across the world. It's been just really cool to see some of the homebrew creations you guys have made. And I just want to say thank you for letting me be a part of it. So with that quick announcement out of the way, let me take you on a tour of the Shadowfell. Uh, in today's podcast episode, you're going to join me as your tour guide as we enter the Shadowfell, look at some of its inhabitants and actually talk about some of its dangers and hopefully make it back out alive. So first thing you need to know, friends, is that the Shadowfell is a very dangerous place. So with that said, I need you to stay with me and the rest of the tour group. We don't need any wandering wandos or misbehaving mavens. Uh, you need to stay with the tour group. We have a big tour group today. So if you do get lost, look for this big yellow flag that I'm holding up right now. All right. So as you all know, and you're probably wondering why, but right now we are standing in Faerun in a very dark forest walking towards a cemetery, which uh, obviously you know Faerun is one of the worlds of Dungeons and & Dragons. And I know that traveling here was not easy for many of you, but let me tell you, this tour is going to be worth the cost. Also. I, like I said, I we are going towards a graveyard, and I can see many of you are looking around warily, uh, but it's okay. I've used a special turn undead spell, so most of the undead in this general area should be turned right now. Uh, well, hopefully, right? Uh, so stay together, keep up. Uh, anyways, I'll explain why we're here in this crypt a little bit later. Uh, before we get into the Shadowfell itself, though, there are a couple things you need to know. Like, first of all, what the heck is the Shadowfell in the first place? Uh, well, because the multiverse is so vast and complex, the Shadowfell can really be anything any particular DM would want it to be for, uh, for, for any reason. But for the most part, it does have some similarities across the multiverse from dimension to dimension and, and so forth. I will also say that because the Shadowfell changes D&D game to D&D game and sourcebook to novel, I might miss some things in this edition of the tour of the Shadowfell, and, and in fact, this tour is actually just the, the, the introduction tour to the Shadowfell. So if you want to join us later on for our kind of expert look on the Shadowfell, or if I miss anything today, please let me know. Send me a, uh, a message 
on Instagram at how to be a better DM or monsters.rent. Uh, but continuing back to, to the tour, the first thing you need to know about the Shadowfell is that it's always a separate plane unto itself, a demi plane or a region, depending on where in reality you find yourself. Uh, generally, traveling to the Shadowfell is a bit more involved than just walking there or driving there. But we're going to talk about that in a second. You just need to know that it's generally sort of a separate entity uh, separated from other areas. Also, on this tour, we will be visiting the Shadowfell as a completely separate plane than our own. I know some of you come from different realities where it's sort of just a different continent or maybe uh, it's just a demiplane, but in, in, in this reality, it is a completely different plane. And we'll explain a little bit more of what the Shadowfell is once we get there, but for now, you need to know that it's a plane of shadow, darkness, and despair, so it uh, should be a very fun place to visit, right? Uh, hopefully you guys brought some smiles and uh, tips for your tour guide. All right, so when it comes to traveling to the Shadowfell, again, keep up, please, people in the back, don't, uh, don't get lost, but when you travel to the Shadowfell, there are a few basic options. Obviously, you can use the Plane Shift spell to get there, but aside from obviously needing to be able to cast a 7th level spell, a Plane Shift spell means you also need to have a Tuning Fork tuned to the Shadowfell. Or, you need to know the specific sigil sequence of a teleportation circle within the shadow spell, the shadow fell. The tuning fork is not so hard to come by, but the spell casting ability, that's a different story. Not, not so many people can cast 7th level spells. I know with adventurers it's, it's pretty common, but with normal people like me, uh, it's, it's a bit harder. <clears throat> One thing to know with the tuning fork as well, it also needs to have been attuned to the Shadowfell previously, so it, it was essentially brought from the Shadowfell back, which might make it a little bit more harder to come by. I also failed to mention that you can use the Gate spell, but as that is a ninth level spell, uh, that's even more hard to kind of accomplish. But alternatively, you can simply just find a place where the planes converge, right? These places are naturally called convergences. Pretty simple. For any planes that share these convergences, these, these gates or portals can be basically anywhere, but they're usually found anywhere that magical energies pool. For example, maybe you might find a dark wood where the shadows of seven, seven different trees overlap, or you might find that a pipe in a sewer leads straight to the Shadowfell, or you might find a crypt with a corner of a mausoleum that is just a little bit too creepy. And in fact, that last example is the one we're going to today to get to the Shadowfell. All right, everyone, uh, step this way. Mr. Johnson, Mr. Johnson, please don't frolic with the resident undead. Yes, thank you. I'm aware. I know they want to eat you and bite you, but please stay with the group. I know it's fun. Uh, just keep up. All right, everyone, now, as you can see, we're in one of the mausoleums of this crypt. And if you look in that corner over there in the left, see how no light penetrates it at all. Over there, right now, is a gate to the Shadowfell. Now, in a moment, we're going to walk through that, but first, let me warn you, interplanar, or, or excuse me, intraplanar travel is sometimes very unpleasant. And if you feel sick, put your head between your legs. Please don't throw up on the nice vests we gave you. Uh, you will have to return those at the end of the tour. Okay, uh, everyone, all together, here we go. Let's step through the portal. And voila, here we are in the Shadowfell. Yes, yes, Miss Collins, very good question. How do we know that we are in the Shadowfell indeed? Obviously, whenever you do intraplanar travel, you want to make sure you know where you are. Uh, well, you see, the Shadowfell is actually what's called a mirror plane or dimension. Uh, it mirrors what is on the material plane. Or our plane and it's it's similar to the Feywild in that respect and any other mirror planes that exist and this is probably why you're asking how do we know we're on the shadow plane or the shadow fell because where we are it still looks like the mausoleum well when you travel to the shadow fell it, it since it's a mirror plane it means that many things that you would find on the the material plane also exist in the shadow fell with some changes though first of all have you all noticed the chill in the air, the, the coldness. Uh, are any of you feeling depressed? 
See, those are effects of the Shadowfell. Now, I also want you to look around at this mausoleum. Do you notice any particular changes? That's right. See, over there, uh, you see, you know, some cracks that weren't there before. This, this Overall, this mausoleum just looks a lot more run down, dirty, and frankly, just in disrepair. Uh, walls are crumbling. You see some black ichor over there that I would not touch. Please do not touch that. Uh, we, we can't get uh, stains off of our buses once we get back, so everyone come back clean if you can. Uh, one thing to know as well, the Shadowfell isn't a perfect mirror. Instead, it's sort of a, a shadowy representation, really, a darkened sim simulacrum. Okay, everyone, follow me. Uh, we're going to exit the crypt, and uh, again, please do not wander from the tour group. I have a special protective charm here that should be able to protect you from most things here, but only if you stay within 30 feet of me. Uh, in my last group, a young couple snuck off for who knows what, probably to do some canoodling, but let's just say they did not get their complimentary Shadowfell Tours baseball caps, unfortunately. Uh, again, as we're walking out this, this crypt, notice how similar the surroundings look to the material plane, those gravestones, though even the names are, are very similar, but notice how the gravestones themselves are much more decayed and run down. That tree does not have any leaves compared to the one in the material plane, which was very lush. Uh, also, take a moment and look up in the sky. Though it feels like nighttime, there are no stars and no moon. Even look at my torch that I'm holding in my hand, where this burning light provided about 30 feet of light in the material plane at night. It it only really provides about 10 feet of light in the Shadowfell, which is why I actually gave each of you a torch as well. Now, one last thing you should all know before we continue the tour is that even though the Shadowfell is a mirror of the material plane, it, it all sort of shifts from time to time, right? And that's partly why it's so dangerous. Places may shift location and even sometimes disappear or be replaced with new places entirely. Now please, everyone, step into these nice tour vehicles. Uh, these vehicles have also been warded, but please keep your hands and feet inside the vehicles at all times. While they are warded from monsters and undead, they are not warded from your head getting lopped off by a stray branch. Uh, okay, <clears throat> right now, uh, as we are in these vehicles, you can hear me on the radio if you're not in my immediate vehicle, uh, but we are traveling to a specific domain of dread called Barovia. And I'll explain that and uh, you know much more as we continue, but first let me tell you about some of the creatures you might find here in the Shadowfell. Uh, first of all, notice these trees that we're passing. See how the trees are either desiccated and craggly, or they're just a little bit more sinister. If they have leaves, the leaves are darker. You know, you won't find anything really cheery in the Shadowfell, unless it's cheery in some nefarious way, in which case I would run far and fast if I were you. Basic rule of thumb here in the Shadowfell, everything wants to kill you. Uh, well, well, I guess not everything. There are the Vistani. Uh, they may or may not want to kill you, but the Vistani are, are wanderers who wander the mists of the Shadowfell without being affected by it. They actually wear bright colors, you know, and are known for their musical talent as well as various other trades, including entertaining, silversmithing, cooking, and horse trading, to name a few. Uh, an adventurer traveling through the Shadowfell might actually come upon one of their caravans if they needed to trade for some goods or, or if they just needed some sort of respite from the despair of the Shadowfell. But the Vistani are not ones to cross, believe me. If, if you're thinking about stealing something from them or, or double-crossing them, they have this gift called the Evil Eye, which, which lets them curse anyone they look at, just looking at them. Uh, but, I mean, compared to everything else in the Shadowfell, these, these people won't kill you on sight. So they're, they're pretty nice. And actually, yes, yes it is. Okay, yeah, uh, we're actually coming up on a Vistani caravan right now. Wow, this is super, super awesome, super lucky. Uh, you guys are in for quite a treat. As we as we approach, you see their wagons. Notice the bright colors, uh, and you know, hear that music in the air. Oh, there! Hello! How are the roads? Terrible, terrible. Very nice to see you. Would you like to buy anything? You know, actually, I would like to buy something. I'm kind of in. Uh, a thirsty mood, you could say. What have you got by way of magic potions? 
Oh, uh, let me see. We have a uh, potion of engorgement. I think we have, yes, we do a potion of haste. Get things done very quick. Also, we have a magic mind. Ah, yes, a magic mind. That would be perfect. In fact, these are actually the sponsor of today's tour through the Shadowfell. Uh, and, and my Vistani friend, would you mind explaining to my tourists here what magic mind is and what it does? Why, of course. You see, in the Shadowfell, we are covered with a miasma of despair. If you stay here too long, you might be overcome with this despair. You might find yourself waking up dreading the day, feeling sluggish and like your mind is filled with wet cement. Magic Mind is designed to help stave off the effects of the Shadowfell despair. It has wonderful ingredients including ashwagandha, lion's mane mushrooms and many more vitamins. It's the perfect thing for adventurers in the Shadowfell or any other plane. That's right. And actually, because it's the sponsor of today's tour through the Shadowfell, uh, you, our tour guests, can go purchase one of these at the gift shop at the end of the tour, or you can visit any local Sprouts food markets back in the material plane. Uh, but really, the best place to go is to go to www.magicmind.com slash janbetterdm. That's J-A-N-B-E-T-T-E-R-D-M and use the code BETTERDM20 at checkout. And doing that gives you one free month with a subscription of three months. So that's a 20% discount, uh, but it is only for the month of January. So don't forget to go there. Uh, and actually, Mr. M M my, my Vistani friend, you can uh, go there too uh, and use that same coupon. Oh, thank you very much. That is very kind of you. Uh, will you be staying the evening? I'm sorry, we actually have to press on. We are uh, headed to Barovia. Oh, Barovia. I do not envy you. In fact, uh, here, you might take this magic mind just for good luck. <laughs> well, uh, that was strange. Anyways, uh, let's, let's continue. Um, so, again, one of the nice... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Look over there. Yes, okay, oh, off to the right. If you look kind of out over that forest that is just down in the valley from us, yeah, you see that, yeah, if, if you can see that very tall figure. Oh, wow, yes. So so I'm talking about that enormous creature that seems to be made of shadow and has very, very large horns. And you can see it walking through the trees, and it stands above the trees, actually. That is what's called a Nightwalker. That is actually one of the creatures that adventurers might find in the Shadowfell. It's definitely one of the more challenging creatures with a challenge rating of 20. And the Nightwalker is a sentient creature of undeath and darkness. And it takes pleasure in suffering and, and the corruption of other creatures. Uh, this Nightwalker generally stands about 20 feet, as you can see, and has a natural weakness to sunlight. So if you're ever in a pickle, definitely use sunlight or, or damage from sunlight. Uh, the Nightwalker also has a very strange ability to turn its victims into Bodax, which is another creature adventurers might find in the Shadowfell. And actually, if you look really closely, uh, your driver might have a binocular you can pull up, but if you look at the Nightwalker's feet, you can see a Bodak kind of trailing behind him. Uh, see those humanoid creatures uh, that have rough looking clothing on, black skin and a face that looks really hollow with kind of a long elongated mouth. Yes, that's a Bodak. So Bodaks are also similar to Nightwalkers in that they're somewhat sensitive to sunlight, but they're equally malicious. While a Bodak's challenge rating is only a 6, it still has a lot of damage resistances that can make it a very challenging foe. Add to that the fact that the Bodak has an aura that when activated can just cause necrotic damage to most around it, you know, within 30 feet. So it's, it's definitely something to be aware of. Uh, when you're traveling through the the shadow fell uh, what was that no I'm sorry we won't be stopping for snacks I'm I'm sorry we just don't have time in the tour um, maybe maybe some of your other two wait hold on wait do you hear that oh do you guys hear that mournful howl yes yes okay driver here let's take a quick detour over yeah dr okay other vehicles come on follow this way uh, yes. Ah, and there it is. Okay, everyone kind of quiet down. So you see over there, sitting on that boulder, is what's called a lonely sorrow swarm. Uh, if, you, if you look closely, you can see its pale body and its black tears kind of streaming down its face. 
Also notice how it is reeling in its long harpoon-like appendage. Uh, and, and if you look close, you can see one harpoon sort of appendage on both arms. Uh, okay, I think that's close enough. Let's, let's continue. Um, Sorrow Sworn are very interesting creatures. The Shadowfell is obviously a very melancholy place. You all can feel it. And sometimes that pervasive despair can cause the creation of these Sorrow Sworn. And there are different types of Sorrow Sworn, and each embody a sort of different, uh, a particular type of despair. So as the one you saw, the lonely Sorrow Sworn, we have here the embodiment of that deep desire for companionship that we all have. And, and because of this, the lonely Sorrow Sworn shoots out these appendages and kind of harpoons its victims and then pulls them closer to it. Uh, there, there's another type called the angry sorrow sworn, which can be distinguished by its two bickering heads, two heads that kind of are always bickering with each other. Uh, this sorrow sworn uses violence to sustain itself, may, which, which makes its attacks grow stronger whenever its opponents fight back. So, uh, you know, on the flip side of that, if you're ever fighting it and you decide to stop fighting it and, and you want to have kind of a better encounter rather than just a very tough fight, uh, when you stop fighting it, it, its attacks weaken and it becomes more and more confused until it kind of becomes somewhat kind of taunting. The hungry Sorrow Sworn, on the other hand, can be spotted by their gaunt and emaciated frames. They look very, very skinny and they have no fat on their bodies at all, which leads them to constantly seek anything to fill their bellies. They will eat adventurers alive if necessary, though you'll probably die before you're fully ingested. Uh, the lost Sorrow Sworn have multiple limbs and grasp at anyone or anything they see in a desperate and fearful attempt to overcome the anxiety of being completely lost. These Sorrow Sworn are usually created by people visiting the Shadowfell who become lost and wander in the mists. I'm talking to you, Dave. Yeah, I don't want to see you jumping out of the car anymore, okay? Uh, I, anyways, th these lost Sorrow Sworn are again. They are from people who get lost in the Shadowfell. Uh, the, the, the smallest Sorrow Sworn are what's called the Wretched Sorrow Sworn. These are small bipedal creatures that somewhat look like chickens if you kind of lopped off the chicken's head and then you made like the, the, the breast of the chicken, their face and head. Uh, these, these small creatures run in packs ranging throughout the Shadowfell, really devouring anything they can come upon. Uh, so, you know, if, if you adventure in the Shadowfell, definitely beware these the massive numbers of just these tiny creatures. Um, th there are tons and tons of creatures in the Shadowfell. And uh, basically, you know, any undead, you've probably seen as we've, you know, been driving uh, a zombie or a, a ghoul, you know, as we've passed. But any, any creature of undead, uh, undeath, or any creature of shadow could really be found here. We're not going to too much spend too much time on creatures, just because uh, looking at the clock, we do have some, uh, we do have limited time. We have an appointment in Barovia, which actually, you know, before we get to Barovia, let me tell you about the domains of dread. So, the domains of dread are what you might consider a demiplane, located within the Shadowfell, somewhat separated by a thick mist. And uh, obviously, this can change universe to universe, but. The mists surrounding the domains, which they're often called, prevent the inhabitants of the domains of dread leaving through simple means, like they can't just walk out. Uh, which means that in, in some way, the domains of dread are also sort of a prison, which uh, is terrifying. Uh, in fact, these demiplanes of dread were actually created by the dark powers, unknown beings of, well, dark power that then subjugated the lords that they sort of installed over each section of the Domains of Dread. <laughs> okay, look up here. See, so these are those mists that I was talking about. Uh, and again, everyone stay inside these vehicles as we pass through. The vehicles have special enchantments that allow us to go through. Uh, and uh, as we're going through, let me just say that there are multiple sections within the Domains of Dread, but the oldest and obviously most well known is ruled by the vampire Count Strahd von Zarovich. In fact, the Curse of Strahd module takes place in Barovia under the watchful gaze of the Count himself. Uh, but, but whether or not the, the Curse of Strahd takes place in the Shadowfell, I believe, is up to the Dungeon Master. Uh, it would be simple enough to put it there if you want, or you can leave it in the material plane. 
Ah, okay. Yes, here we are. This is Barovia. Barovia was originally a location in a material world that has long since been forgotten. Uh, and Barovia was transported here to the Shadowfell, like I said, by the Dark Powers, using these mists that we just passed through. And as you can see, Barovia consists of a very large valley that is mostly dense forest. But as you can see over there, there are some cliffs and rocky outcroppings. Uh, looking overhead, you'll see that the sky is mostly dark and overcast, and it's always like that. <clears throat> Unlike some other areas of the Shadowfell, Barovia might seem slightly more similar to the material plane in that the trees and animals that populate this region are more similar to what we have in the material plane, right? If you look to your right and left, you'll see hardwood trees, while up on that ridge over to the kind of uh, 11 o'clock, you know, you have some evergreen trees. Uh, so, so looking pretty similar to what we have. But if you direct your attention kind of to really 1230, I guess, from where we are, uh, you'll see our next destination itself, uh, Castle Ravenloft, Strahd's own home, and the center from which he rules the entire valley. And at the bottom of, uh, of, of Castle Ravenloft, you can sort of see uh, Barovia. Uh, and, you know, now that we've actually entered the town of Barovia itself, uh, notice how unwelcoming and distrustful the inhabitants here are. Uh, s slamming doors and wayward glances are pretty normal here, so if, if you or your adventurers are, are traveling here, they should expect not very many warm welcomes. Uh, this place is not any, it's not any sort of place to find a warm mug of ale and a welcome song. Uh, over there, you'll see the Amber Temple, which is an ancient temple built by wizards who were uh, then corrupted by the Dark Powers. Uh, and inside, you'd find images of dark beings from all across the multiverse. And in fact, actually, that temple is where Strahd himself forged, forged his deal with the Dark Powers in the first place. Uh, so, you know, if uh, I, I doubt we'll have time, but if you come back, you can also visit there. Uh, also, it is kind of a pity that we weren't able to visit the other three villages in the valley, Velaki, Kresk, Oraznu, uh, but if you do want to visit those villages, then you can book our extended tour, which uh, is not this one. This is, after all, the introductory tour to the Shadowfell. Uh, okay, and now we are sending up the steep slope to that rocky outcropping that I mentioned before, upon which you can all see the very tall Castle Ravenloft, Strahd's home. Uh, and as we descend, turn your heads back to the valley and notice that you can see most of the Barovian Valley. This is presumably why the castle was built up here as, as well as the natural defense that having this height would afford the castle. All right, <clears throat> so everyone please exit the vehicles and uh, kind of group together. Remember, as we enter the castle, we are Strahd's guest at Better Dungeon Master Tours. We pride ourselves on our guest's survivability rate. And to that end, we actually have a deal with Strahd that as long as you stay with the tour guide, a.k.a. me, you won't be harmed. But if you wander off, I honestly, I can't help you. So stay with me. <clears throat> and yes, these enormous wooden doors were handcrafted decades ago. I don't think it is mahogany, uh, but it is nice, dark wood, wonderful craftsmanship. Uh, anyways, so let me knock. Ah, Count Von Zarovich. Please, call me Strahd. Welcome to Barovia, and welcome to Castle Ravenloft. Very well, Strahd. Uh, thank you so much for hosting our tour group. Uh, you know, your valley is most impressive. Thank you. Please, follow me. The room you just entered into is our foyer. We will go through just two more rooms before we sit down to have our interview. This next room we are entering is the chapel. Every good castle must have one, and Ravenloft is no different. Moving on, we are passing into the main dining hall. Notice the enormous chandeliers hanging from the ceiling. All three are handmade from crystal long ago, before I was brought to this accursed plane. Here you will find seats at my table, with a wonderful meal prepared. Excellent. 
Uh, okay, well, let's get into it. So, now, Strahd, as you know, our tour involves mostly dungeon masters who uh, would uh, care to introduce the Shadowfell to their players. But there may be a few players here, too, right? Uh, yes, this is one reason why I agreed to the interview. If your tourists had been nothing more than peasants, I would have killed each and every one of them. I'm sure you would. So, uh, with our audience in mind, then, what would you say is the hardest part of traveling in the Shadowfell? Well, I think the hardest parts involve the pervasive despair, for one, and the difficulty of providing food. The Shadowfell is a very difficult place to live. Most of the creatures here are inedible for mere mortals. Even the more mundane creatures that have managed to survive here will not taste fully satisfying. It is part of the course living here. Any DM that wishes to bring their players here could highlight the despair. And for characters who spend extended periods of time here, the DM might choose to have them gain levels of exhaustion. Or perhaps shift their entire role-playing demeanor to be more melancholic and more depressed. As far as the food is concerned, any food the adventurers eat unless it has been blessed, will taste dull and possibly bland. Its very taste will add to the melancholy and despair of the shadow of hell. The water will feel less refreshing, unless it is that vile stuff, that holy water. As a dungeon master, I would stress the ambient pressures that the adventurers might feel while in this place. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, now, what about monsters? What sort of monsters would you throw at adventurers? Oh, well, you see, I have a natural connection to undead, so logically, I would probably start there. Basically, anything necrotic, shadowy, or undead works for me. Because the Shadowfell is an entire plane of darkness and danger, I would make it very clear to any adventurers I had brought to the Shadowfell that the longer they stay and fight any given enemy, barring any extenuating circumstances such as being in a valley like Barovia, the higher the chance there is that more monsters come to fight them. If they spend too long fighting a single zombie, soon there will be two zombies and then a specter, and then a bodak, and then eventually a night walker. The shadow fell is dark, but it is also quiet and eerie. Any sounds travel great distances. I see. So the idea is to finish the fight and move on before you attract way more attention than you wanted to, uh, so, so what, what about adventure hooks? What sort of things would you do to get your adventurers to come here uh, in the story? Well, obviously you could do any number of things. The simplest adventure hook is that the party accidentally sleeps under a tree whose shadows turn into a gate to the Shadowfell at night under a waning moon. That way might feel a little railroady, but it gets the job done. If you were to involve myself in your adventures, you could forge a letter from my hand, inviting the adventurers to a party, if they dare, at Castle Ravenloft. You could also have the adventurers seek an herb that only grows in the Shadowfell. You may involve the Vistani somehow. Maybe the Vistani cheated the adventurers or stole something from them when they were all camped together. And now the adventurers need to enter the Shadowfell to retrieve what was stolen. Those are all fantastic ideas. Uh, thank you so much for the meal, Count, and you know, thank you for your hospitality. My pleasure. Anytime. In fact, if any of you would wish to remain here for a bonus follow-up Q&A, I'd be happy to sate your appetite for knowledge. Um, that's, that's quite all right. So thank you so much. In fact, oh, look at that. The tour is almost over. So we really got to get going. No, 
I insist that you all stay. Um, everybody, run. <laughs> out of the way, stupid zombie. Watch out for those skeletons. Every, hurry up, step around. Come on, I have a very, everyone gather around me. I have a very special plane shift talisman. Three, two, one. Uh, thank you for joining me on the tour to the Shadowfell. <sighs> Sorry about that last part. We'll have to, you know, I think we're going to have to <sighs> revisit the terms of our, our contract with Tr Strahd. But, uh, did everyone, did everyone make it out okay? Um, wait. Where are the Petersons? Did they? One, two, th Ah, dang it. Not again. I guess I'm not going to get a good review from them, huh? Oh well. Um, as I said, thank you for joining me on this brief tour of the of the Shadowfell. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And I hope you learned a, a thing or two. If you have some comments about the tour or about uh, my touring guide, tourist guide, please send it again as a message to Instagram, monsters.runner. How to be a better DMGs that run took it out of me. Whew. Also, if you'd like to help us with our advanced tour of the Shadowfell, please reach out. We'd love any insight or ideas you have, any experiences of your time visiting the Shadowfell. Also, you know, please take a moment to visit the gift shop over there to your left and, and get your I Survived My Trip to the Shadowfell t-shirt, as well as, well as any photos that our lovely photographer was able to get along the trip. Uh, we, we hope you'll join us again at Better Dungeon Master Tours, but as always, this has been Better Dungeon Master Tours. Justin Lewis here. See you next time, and until then, let's roll initiative. Thank you for listening to today's show. Uh, we really appreciate your support and your patronage. We have a few more announcements to go over. Uh, first... Did you ever fall in love with the library as a kid? It was a place where you could experience a thousand stories without having to buy a thousand books. That is what Monsters at Rent can do for your D&D campaign. You can rent and swap out as many quality miniature monsters and creatures for your D&D party as you could ever want without having to buy them. You can rescue villagers from a kobold camp or lead your party through the fighting forest or many more adventures. We're coming out with new bundles all the time. Just sign up for our subscription to get access to your own personal library of minis. Go to monsters.rent to find out more. That's the website, monsters, with an S, dot rent. Get your library pass to a world of minis today. We also wanted to let you know that today's episode is sponsored by Stardust and Dragons. I'm going to let one of the cast of Stardust and Dragons, Christian Hatcher, and his crew tell you a little bit more about it. This August, a new adventure podcast is coming to a platform near you, filled with action. You one of the two of them. We can't right. keep taking hits like that. Drama. Everything that she's been doing, everything she's going to do finally sets in and stardust help help <coughs> someone please find out more about this epic odyssey at stardustanddragons.com where adventure awaits in the stars that's all the announcements we have today again thank you so much for everything you do for us you make this show possible like we said before we'll be back next week with another great episode and until then let's go ahead and roll initiative